a lot of people have been really afraid, saying a lot of things. And I think that, I think everybody just needs to settle down, number one. Those of us who believe in the sovereignty of God with regard to salvation, we ought to believe in the sovereignty of God with regard to everything else. We're not to worry, we're not to fret. We have in Psalms 2 a great consolation, and that is that God has set His King on His holy hill, and His administration does not change, does not come up for vote. There will never be a changing of the guard. Christ always reigns. And in one week, I have also seen a lot of positive things come out of this election. What are they? Number one, the church seems to be weaning itself away from trusting in political parties and putting its faith and hope where it ought to be, and that is God, crying out to Him. Realizing more and more that we're marginalized in this world and that we have nothing here except Christ and His presence as a down payment for the world to come. Another thing I think is very important that all the so-called political battles that we have gained with regard to morality, abortion, marriage rights, can all be taken away with the stroke of a man's pen. So the many, many years of political battles for morality can all be taken away in a day. Now what does that teach us? It teaches us this, that we do, not, we do not fight moral battles politically, where with the sweep of a pen it can be taken away. We fight them by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, seeking to see men's hearts converted. Do not trust in the arm of the flesh. I think one of the reasons for the demise of conservative um, parties in our country today is that the, it's the judgment of God. First of all, they pretended to have a form of godliness but denied the power thereof. Secondly, the people of God were trusting more in politicians and what they could do to save our country than trusting in God and His gospel. Some people say these are the worst of times. No, they're not. They're the best of times. Anytime God is working to purify the church, it's a wonderful time. A horrible time, a frightful time, is when we see the church walking in a way that is not proper and God doing nothing. One of the evidences that He is still among the candlesticks is that He deals with them. He deals with them. A lot of people say that the conservative parties need to rethink what they believe and need to rethink their strategy. I would say more that the Church of Jesus Christ in America needs to rethink what she believes and rethink her strategy. That she ought to believe what Scripture says. She ought to stand upon the sufficiency of Scripture and she ought to order herself conform to the mandates of Scripture. One of the things that I think you're going to see is that all this silly church growth stuff and seeking to be relevant by looking like the world is not going to do anything. We are the salt of the earth. Another thing that I've been thinking about recently is, is my preaching. How should I preach? After speaking a bit with Ken Ham a few weeks ago and with Ray Comfort and others and just sitting there and thinking myself about my preaching, about all our preaching, I've realized something. We do not live in the same world we lived in 40 years ago. We have been robbed of all the foundations necessary in preaching the gospel. One of those great foundations has been creation. We have been robbed of it. 
So when I go out on a, on a campus and start preaching, I need to be as innocent as a dove, but as clever as a serpent. I need to realize who the people are to whom I'm speaking. They don't believe in anything anymore. So I can't start where I used to start. I have to go much farther down the ladder to deal with things like creation, deal with things, what, what do Christians believe? You see, here's what's going to continue to happen more and more. They are not going to put before the world what Christians believe and then refute us. What they're going to do is put some twisted version of Christianity before the world or present us as something absolutely contrary to what we really are and then get the world to hate us. We need, in a sense, to be men who are also apologists. Now, when we think about apologists, I'm not speaking about those who would seek to prove the existence of God, but those who can explain what the Christian faith truly is what it really is, what we mean when we speak. For me just to go out on the campus and rail against sin could play into the devil's hands. All they see is a madman railing. But to speak about sin in a way that drives the point home right to their own conscience is another matter. To look them face to face and to begin to peel them like an onion. Not just speaking in glowing generalities. You're a bunch of sinners and the world's full of sinners and you guys are doing this and that. But appeal to what they know. Their conscience bears witness to the law that's been written upon their heart. They know they have violated God's commands. To be able to give an answer. You want to go out and do street preaching and all sorts of things, but can you give an answer when someone confronts you? Why you believe what you believe? So these are great and wonderful times to be a Christian. We know that in spite of all the hoopla, and all the cry for change. We know that it is simply going to lead to more emptiness. More failure. We know that. The problem is that Christianity in America is so messed up, so weak, that most of what's called Christianity can't provide the answer. And don't think that you can either. <coughs> Just because you've listened to Dr. Piper or studied the Bible for a year. There is a great necessity for you to study and show yourself approved. And to be able to truly, truly, with the wisdom God gives you through Scripture, confront this age. Not with a critical smirky, proud look on your face, but with humility and with love and brokenness. These are the best of times. The best of times. I can only think of the opportunities that's going to arise. When a culture goes wrong, I heard a man say one time, when a culture goes wrong, there are three groups, three professions, he says, that clean up the mess. Doctors, lawyers, and preachers. A doctors can heal physical maladies. Lawyers can get men out of legal problems. But only preachers can bring about the salvation of a soul through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that's what 
we are to be. We are to be. A polished blade. A polished blade. We no longer have the privilege or luxury of just assuming. Of just quoting things off the top of our head. We live in a world that's going to call us to defend what we're saying. And we've got to be able to defend it. Now again, I'm not necessarily talking about apologetics to prove the existence of God. I'm speaking about being able to defend and tell what